Hi, this is Christopher Lewis, and welcome to Dating Intelligence, the podcast where we give relationship advice from dating to marriage and everything else in between, and always with the goal of helping you to continuously be the best you at all times. All right, guys, hello, hello. So thank you so much for joining me for another episode, and I want to tell you that I have an incredible guest and show lined up for today. So let me get right to it. All right. So you know, at the beginning of every year, we all come up with some long list of New Year's resolutions that will make us feel more confident and optimistic about our choices than the previous year. I mean, it's only natural that we want to continue creating healthier and smarter habits, right? So why should this be any different than how you want your dating lives to be? Whether you're single or have just gotten out of something, I know you're all looking for a fresh start or a do-over when you get back out into the dating world. Well, my guest and co-host is definitely someone who knows how to get you back on track. She's a dating relationship strategist and the founder of and CEO of Level Connections, which is the first hybrid technology-driven matchmaking service that combines AI with expert human support. She's a pioneer in the matchmaking industry and has been one of the most sought-after experts for more than 20 years. She empowers her clients with knowledge, confidence, and clarity to succeed in dating and love. She is currently co-hosting on Anna Ferris's podcast, Unqualified, and has been featured on Dr. Phil, Good Morning America, and numerous other shows. Please welcome April Byers to the show. Welcome, April. How are you? Hi, Chris. I'm doing great. Great. I'm so happy that you're on my show, and I just can't tell you how excited that I'm happy to have you here. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, Yeah, it's great to be connected. I think this is going to be fun today. So I'm going to start off, April, by telling you what our topic of the day is, and it's something that you're well familiar with. It's going to be called Dating Smarter, How to Set Yourself Up for Dating Success. All right, so you and I are going to converse on how to help people date smarter. That's a big thing, and I feel, as you know, that people just sometimes, they're just throwing themselves out there with into the wind with no rhyme or reason. What do you think? Well, a lot of people enter into the dating space uh, without the right intention, right? Mm-hmm. We hear, you know, you, get, you go through a breakup, you're in pain, you're sad, you feel rejected. And what do your friends and family say to do? Get on a dating app. Get Get out out there. there. Get back out there. Get back on the horse. And what people don't realize is now you're just getting out there in a in a in a way that isn't organized or intentional or thoughtful. Not only are you going to mess it up, (laughs) but you're also getting in the way of somebody else's life as well. We don't think about that. Right. That's true. What we think about when we want to get out and date is I'm going to solve my loneliness. Right. I'm going to solve my pain by putting myself out there. We'll talk about that word or that phrase out there. Okay. Why I don't like it. <laughs> but if you go out there and you're not ready or intentional, you're actually getting in the way of somebody else having a great journey, which is why the dating space is so chaotic and confusing. Okay. Because there's so much mixed messaging because we assume that if somebody is dating, that means they're ready. Right. So it's like you're saying it's almost how actors have to be prepared, doing your prep for anything, really, before you go into a meeting or anything. You need to know your what, what, what's going on. You need to do your research. You need to do your prep before you get out there. Prep. Am I right? Yes. I, would you ever go into a meeting without prepping? No. Right? No, I came to this meeting prepped. April, I can't. So well, I'm, I, can't, I'm ready I prepped to go. about you too. <laughs> yeah, oh, do we, tell. What do you find to, out? Well, just I don't know. I can't tell now. Uh, <laughs> we have to prepare. Like anything that has been amazing in our lives, we put some time and effort into it. But people think that the effort is the dating itself, the swipe, right? Right. Oh, I'm so exhausted, April. I've been dating, dating, dating. No, you're not. You're swiping. Right. The work is the self education. It's the learning about. Who am I? What do I want? How do I want to be seen in the world? And what do I need to receive? And what do I have to give? Right. Okay. Right. Okay. And on that then, so I've done my homework, which is great on everything you just talked about. Um, let's start off with this. You were talking about when you're on a dating app and stuff, people are just swiping this, swiping that. How do you feel and what do you think about what they should be looking for when they do this? Like, I know bios are out there. They, the and bios, by the way, they're just, now I hear they're really witty and just kind of fun. And it really doesn't even have to do anything with that person. They're just trying to outwit the other person just to get that first look. Am I right? Exactly. So what do you think that they should be looking for then? It's hard because so many of the apps don't give you the right questions. Mm-hmm. Um, and because it's supposed to be outwitting one another, um, we're talking about things that are very surface level and superficial. So it's very tough right. to be able to see someone's values or what they're looking for because they literally don't offer the real estate within the app right. to share that. And most people think if they're on a public forum and platform that they shouldn't show anything personal like or share too vulnerable. Much. Is that right? Yeah. Right. So you don't have to be personal. 
right? You're not going to tell somebody where you live. You're not going to what I call spill your candy in the lobby and share all your <laughs> war stories. But you should be personable. Agreed. And you should share your thoughts or feelings about something. That can't get you hurt. Right. And if it's worded correctly, I feel like you could share all that and still get your point across. Agreed? Right. Exactly. But the problem is there's a lot of people that are getting overlooked on the apps because they are falling into that. I okay. need to look light. Okay. I need to look entertaining. I need to look funny. So everybody starts to blur into one another. There's no standouts. Yeah. And, or individuality. And so you, if you're going to be on a dating app, that means you're going to have to put in the time to do the back end work of phone calls, emails, maybe a FaceTime, okay. maybe a Zoom date before you get the car out of the driveway and get to your date. It's it's a longer haul. So All if right. you're gonna do that, what I call self-service, then you have to put in the time and energy. Okay, so let's start then by making these, my listeners smarter. Okay. Let's start with that. Okay, we got a lot of listeners out there and I've heard a lot from them that they just do some dumb ass shit out there. I'm really sorry. And you're like, what? So yeah. let's just start with that. So how about this? I'm going to give you the first thing to talk about. And one of the first things I want to talk about is like you had mentioned it a little bit is find your blind spots. Let's talk about that. How does one find their blind spots? How does one, you know, you're on a first date, or, you know, you could be on your first date, you could be a seasoned dater, but I feel like everyone has a blind spot. They're always missing something, you know? And so let's, let's talk about that. Mm. How do you do that? How do you self-evaluate? Okay. Ooh, that's such a great question, Chris. Thank you. That's so good. <laughs> Thank you. Really, really good. Um, okay. So blind spots are what happens when we're looking in one direction, yes, mm -hmm. and we're unaware of something in our mirror. Okay. So what you have to do is if you have a rep like a, any kind of repetition that happens to you, it's not because all people out there are married and approaching or all people are jerks or all women are liars, right? You are attracting something continuously. Okay. We have a we have a hat trick, right? We have something that continuously bubbles up for us. So A, it's just sort of we need to be aware of what that is, right? Right. Let's say you always miss the narcissist because you fall madly in love with the attention and the energy that that kind of person brings to you. They sweep you away. They sweep you away. Yeah, they do. Like a narcissist, when you first meet somebody, and I don't want to get into psychology, but when you first meet someone like that, or who has been labeled or diagnosed or not, you do, in that moment, feel very attracted and pulled in. Right. But if you can layer that with, okay, I want to be attracted, I want to be inspired, I want to feel connected to somebody, but I also need to feel blank. So figure out what is the juxtaposition of that thing that you are most attracted to that you keep missing. Okay. So if I want to feel the chemistry, but I also know I need to feel safe. And I need to make sure that the next time around, I meet somebody who is caring and considerate of me. Mm -hmm. So it's also about understanding it and then allowing that to, forgive me, trump <laughs> what is going on with the chemistry. Correct. You have to be, have the ability to walk away. Unfortunately and fortunately, in order to do that, you have to love yourself a little bit more than you love being out with that person or getting involved in a relationship because that's why we overlook it. Okay. And how long would that, let's say you, you meet this narcissist and at the time, you know, on the first day, you're only going to see what you see from that person. And as time goes on, you decide to go out on a second or third date. When does this hopefully start to, you know, when you should come off of cloud nine a little bit and say, okay, I need to check in. I need to do my checklist for myself. Right. So it's, it, you have to know your values. You have to know yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you have to know um, what your own kind of brand is, so to speak. So if I know who I am. Right what my romantic value is, how I want to feel when I'm in a relationship, how I want to be treated. That's my checklist. That's the thing that I come home to. You know, you come home after a date, you take off your clothes, you take off your makeup, and that's your time to do that assessment, not okay. on the date. Right. A lot of people do that. Yeah, that's a good point. And they try to get through, like, if we went out on a date, we're both taken. But <laughs> if we went out on a date, um, we don't need to say, what are you looking for? And am I safe with you? That's right. not the conversation we need to be it's having. It's like you're sizing the person up, you know, each other. It's like a chess match. You're both sizing each other, trying to figure out what you want from that person at that moment in time right there. Exactly. Which is horrible. Horrible. Because now you're not, you're not even really there. You're just kind of just going through this list of things and not really being present at all. Not present. Yeah. 
right? And you're okay. not listening to that intuition that we all have. I mean, every single person alive has intuition. It's just some of us have it more developed than others, right? right? God, I love that intuition of being with the bad girl, though, April, man. Uh, you, really? Me, You've been there, it done that? It gets me on. I'm like, on, you know, it's like red flags. I'm like, ding, ding, Why ding, ding, the ding, bad ding. girl? I'm just making a point. I oh. love all women. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but but for some reason, you know, it's just this one type of girl that always attracts me. But who I'm mm. with now, she across the board meets that thing. And it's funny. She says something about myself. She says, you know, one thing I love about Chris is the fact that he's a, he's he's such a great guy, but he's got a little bit of bad boy in him. Mm. So she's checked across all of her things, which is to say that anyone out there, if you're looking for that type of person that you always want, like April said, you still have to have a checklist and still might be able to get it all. Well, what you need to do is weigh things, right? Mm-hmm. And then you gotta you gotta drill down and define. So let's say let's just use the example of bad girl or bad boy. Mm-hmm. What do me What do we mean by that? What are the right. traits and the characteristics that are usually in common with the bad boy or the bad girl? Right, mine's I mean, just staying out a little bit longer than anyone else. Usually, half the time, I got nothing else. I'm really? I'm just kidding. So she's a little I, bit more of a party girl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's my bad side. I need someone to kind of go that route with me sometimes. Okay. And I actually like that. Okay, so what we could do to replace that mm-hmm. is like I like somebody who is free spirited and has a, has a sense of adventure. Right. And um, is a little um, more of a risk taker. Right. Um, doesn't conform to everything. Okay, and you hit the nail on the head right there because that is my that's the side I'm looking for. See, okay, you're see? Actually, I'm, I'm actually good at this, but you're schooling me right now because I love this. This is why you're on my show right now. <laughs> I'm actually the type where I actually like someone who's my yin and yang. You know, for myself, I actually have this little, you know, I do have a fun side, but I also have this reserve side. And that other person who always gets me to stretch my limitations on being a little more of a risk taker. Hey, let's do this a little bit more and not getting me out of my comfort zone is the best mm-hmm. way to say it. Mm-hmm. And I would like to be that one for that person as well. So that's what I'm always looking for, where you said I, I do my homework enough to be like, I know what I want, you know, and this and this these are the X's and O's that I'm looking for, the X, Y's and Z's. And now let's see who's out there. And like you said at the beginning, where a lot of guests, I want you to listeners, I want you to hear this right now. Now, um, when you're on that date the first time, you know, don't try to put it all in the one package at the, at the first time. You know, it's very hard to do, like you said, but just kind of enjoy the time and then assess, like April said, when you get home and see if it's worth yeah, it. Yeah. If you're doing that on a date, you are literally not even present. You're not there. <laughs> right. You're not there. The only intention of a date is to connect, not to seek if this person is right for you. So going back to what we were talking about earlier, Chris, about um, this word of I need to get back out there. If we take that sentence and unpack it, that fills me with dread. Like, <laughs> what is out there there mean? It feels very scary. It feels like space. There is no out there. Right. There is only connecting and relating, which is what dating is. So if you're out there and you're single right now, don't think in terms of I've got to go find somebody or I've got to put myself out there. Um, or push myself to find this person. It's, I'm going to go out and I'm going to connect. And I'm going to invest the time with people, invest in curiosity, invest in care, regardless of what the attachment of that outcome is. And that's when we date really smart. When you have the attachment to the outcome, that's when you overlook stuff and you get in trouble. Yeah. Right? And that's when all your blind spots appear. But if your intention is, I'm going to go connect with this human being, I'm going to talk, I, of course, I'd love for it to work out if there's something there. But if you're asking somebody questions from a pure place of, I'm just curious about you, you tend to tell me the truth. Okay. When you're, when you're being asked questions from a woman because you know she's trying to figure out if you're her target demo or if you're the guy for her, you might be giving false positives because you want to win, right? Okay. You want to win that relationship. Yes. You want to get that girl. Right. Which I feel a lot of guys do. Right. You know, they're just who, giving you lip service. Right. Mm-hmm. But what if every time we went on a date, we got the absolute truth out of people, not because we were grilling and drilling, but because we were just asking because it was fun to ask and it was we were curious, right? Right. That's why when I interview clients um, in the matchmaking space, I have met, um, God, thousands and thousands of men and women over the years. And I never work with somebody and then find out that there's someone different 90, 120 days, one year later. And it's because when I go into those meetings, Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I'm going to make this person a client. I go into that meeting going, I'm just going to get to know this guy. Just talk to them. I'm going to talk to this guy. I'm going to get to know this woman. And what happens is when we provide that space of curiosity, people just start sharing their truth. And if you're listening and observing, it's a really natural, fun way to vet and qualify. Right. Without looking 
like you're doing it and without showing the seams. As I they think say. that's brilliant. So you hear that, guys? And this is something, <laughs> listen to what April said. And this is something, it, and it, it's not like it's a skill. It's just you're just having to just go into it without an agenda or with a wall up. Yeah, because what do people say? I'm not going to waste time, right? That's we're, correct. We're all crazy busy. Everybody's trying to get their lives back together right now. So what we do is we go, I'm going to be way more efficient with my dating time. I'm going to spend 80 to 90% of my life in my career, mm -hmm. with friends and family, and then I'm going to carve out like 10%, maybe 5% of my life for dating, and it better all work. Well, yeah. if you're really successful in your career and you devote a lot of time to your education or your career and you're successful at it, that's because you planned, you put in the time, you educated yourself. Right. And then somehow everybody thinks the dating thing is going to just be really easy by putting in a low, low, low investment of time. A lot of complaining, but a low <laughs> investment of time. But that's what's needed, right? How do you get to Carnegie Hall? <laughs> Isn't it funny on what, what you just said on how people truly value certain things in life? And you're right, though. It's like uh, there's a lot of people out there that you know that I've spoken with who are always like, God, I just want to find this. I just want to do this. I want to do this out in the dating world. Why can't I find the right person? Why this happened? And you realize that they're not really spending that much time investing into that part of their life. No, they're spending more time um, doing the things that don't move the needle and spending more time being exhausted and complaining yeah. and searching for love. And that's why they're feeling like they're falling behind and why it's never going to happen. But if they were investing the time in, hey, every single person, unless they're Jack the Ripper, <laughs> every single person I'm meeting, it's <laughs> worth it. Yes, It's worth it. I'm there for 90 minutes or two hours or 30, whatever it is, and I'm going to be in it. I'm right. going to be in it not even knowing if I'm ever going to see you again. So, so that, I'm going to invest high, I love expect this. less. Yeah. So that was my very first date coming out of um, my relationship. I think we had discussed this off air. Yeah. That um, my first getting back into the scene after 17 years, um, I went, and this is a story I've shared before. So my first dating app experience was this woman. I, I was like maybe 46 at the time. She was 51. Mm -hmm. um, she, you know, we had that whole like thing. She called me on the day of her daughter's wedding and said, hey, after the wedding, I can meet you. Why don't you come to my house, which was about an hour away. So I'm like, what the hell? I'll go there. So I'm sitting, April, I'm sitting there amongst the, uh, you know, the, um, what, is, what do you call it? The, um, the, the, the concession people. Uh, she comes over caterers. there and goes, I'm so sorry. Um, you know, the caterers, she's like, I'm so sorry. She's like, um, I need a couple more minutes. I'll be there in a second. So I'm sitting there just waiting patiently. I was like, you know, there's, I had no pressure. I was like, this is fun. It's new. I'm going to see where it goes. So eventually she comes back 20 minutes later and goes, I'm really sorry. Can you meet me at this bar up the street? I'm like, sure, no problem. Once again, I could care less. I'm just happy just to be out talking to people. Um, she shows up. We start talking. At the time, I was like, you know what? She's not going to be for me. But I stayed present. I stayed. And once again, it was just me getting to know how I'm getting back out there in itself as well. So this, even though I knew she was not going to be someone that I wanted to end up with, I knew it was just an experience that would take me to the next one and the next one and the next one. And I felt like, like you said, being present without any expectations, it worked out really well for me. 100%. Yeah. 100%. And that's hard for a lot of people, right? Right. Because everybody wants to be so efficient. Like time efficiency has no place in your dating life if you really want to choose great people. Right. right? If you want to have a happy, happy, healthy life. And also, you know, when I was single, Chris, I loved dating. <laughs> in fact, when my husband proposed and I was moving in with him, <laughs> I, he probably won't be happy to hear this. <laughs> But I remember being in my place, Chris, and I remember having a good cry. Like, oh, I did. I, okay. I, because I thought, I'm never, I'm never going to have that, that first date again with a bunch of people because I love people. I am right. insatiably curious. Yeah. And uh, thank God I get to be curious for a living. I was going to say, it's right? like it's been that moment, though, but it took, because it's your own personal dating life. That's why. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I was 38 when I met my husband okay. and I hadn't been married before. Okay. And it's because I was started matchmaking when I was in my 20s. So for me, it was I had this outside perspective of, wait a minute, if you really want to get that next level relationship, you got to put your big boy pants on or your big girl pants <laughs> on. And I realized that people wanting love and wanting relationship isn't the same thing as I'm ready to commit. I'm ready to be in a relationship. Right. And a lot of people want to sort of leapfrog over the dating to get to the relationship. And I say, wait a minute, the dating is the that's good. Fun. Like that's fun. Yeah. Because you can't get hurt if you're following your intuition and you're being open and you're not attaching to the outcome and you're not taking someone's behavior as an assault on who you are. Right. right? You're not letting your own 
core confidence gets shattered because somebody doesn't want to see you again. If you can get there, dating is a blast. Okay, so let's go off that. This this is something good because this is one of the things I want to discuss with you about. Um, it's what about like you just talked about it, focusing on quality control. <laughs> so how much when you're saying you know it, dating is fun, I I wholeheartedly believe that. You know, in my single days, I could do it all day long. But when is it when is it just a numbers game versus finding something that's going to be pure and special? Oh, when you stop being like when you stop. Well, in general, you know, like there's like, for instance, I have a friend just spoke the other day. It's a really (laughs) funny story. Hey, how's your dating life going? It's great. I go on a date probably once every other day. And I'm like, Mm. so are you? He goes, but they're all crazy. And and there's no one that I think I'm going to end up with. Yeah, he's doing too much. Exactly. So so with dating, what you just said, how do you curb that just a little bit? So we all let our listeners know that, you know, yes, we all want to date and have fun. But when do we need to know how to kind of downsize just a little bit? Right. Well, it's interesting because when I start working with clients in the matchmaking space and I say you're going to meet on average one or two new people a month, they all go into shock because they're coming from, well, I've been on my dating apps and I'm looking at 150 profiles a week. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if we look at that top of the funnel, right? So if you think about it like in a funneling system, so you put everybody at the top of the funnel and by the time everything gets through with religion, politics, values, personality traits, I need this, you need that. Am I what you're looking for? You, Once you get down to it, there's very few people left at the bottom of the funnel. That's true. Right? So that's what I do is I strategize and help people and I assess and I give them sort of a map to follow of like, okay, here's what you're looking for so you don't go out on every, a date every other day. Right. So when we're doing it as a professional, we're not, we might be doing a numbers game on the back end, mm-hmm. but we know exactly what we're looking for for the client. Um, not because they knew, but because we helped them figure it out. That's why they're there in the first <laughs> That's why place. why they're there. <laughs> um, so going out on a date every other day tells me that you're having fun. Mm-hmm. And that you don't really know your own market. You don't really know what you're looking for. And are they are they you, even ready? You may you not know? even be ready. Yeah. Even though they it's, say, like you said, even though they're saying that they're, oh, I'm ready to find something, yeah. they're not. It's not, a, it's not in the numbers. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> it's in what you're looking at, right? And, you know, back in the day, Chris. <laughs> Please covered, tell. Back people. in the covered wagon day. <laughs> I don't know. I, we're Those probably the about the same days. age. You had the, right. They're the best days because you're out there in the world finding. Well, do you, well, you remember like y- you were married early on and I wasn't. But I remember, you know, in my 20s and 30s mm-hmm. going out as a single woman, no apps. And then even when the apps came in, I couldn't use them because I was known in my field as a matchmaker. Gotcha. So it would look weird yeah. if I was on the apps. They're thinking like, why is she like surfing? The- yeah, exactly. <laughs> the apps. They're like, what the charlatan? You know? <laughs> she- <laughs> so uh, I remember going out and like, let's say we walk into a restaurant bar and you're sitting there and I'm sitting there and we both look up and we meet eyes and mm-hmm. we smile at each other. But we didn't, we didn't think now something has to happen from that. Right. It was just connecting. With people. Agreed. Um, the dating app is just that. Every time you swipe on somebody, all that is is a look up. It's not a I choose you. Right. Right. And so we were more selective. We had less volume and relationships were better. Yeah. I've never seen such a demise in morale as I have, especially with women, in the last five to seven years okay. when, the, when the rise of Bumble and Hinge and and I'm not bashing the apps, but Bumble was designed to give women autonomy and freedom and power. Mm-hmm. And I think it's done everything but. Okay. Because it puts women in that position of walking over to you at the bar and going, hey, just in case you didn't see me when I walked in the door, here's my card. And then if you reject that and you don't pursue, that really hurts. Yeah. Women are now in the position, in that traditional position that men have always been in, which you guys were the one that had to cross the gymnasium floor and ask us to dance at the seventh grade Oh, I know that dance. long walk. Many a times right? I've done it. It's like the long yeah. green mile. Yeah. Oh, my God. Talking about with the, I had my collar all, you know, all buttoned up. By oh. the end of it, it was like halfway down to my belly because I was so nervous. Oh. I'm like, you know, so. I bet you were so cute. <laughs> um, right? And so women got like in this like, hey, I get to be, you know, I just get to be here and, and, and accept. And then it's like, wait a minute. I want to be in the driver's seat. Mm. But women don't like it. And it's, it's really hurting people. So why was it that we had... I think better better dates, better quality dates when there was less volume, when there wasn't dating dating tech. So that the the success isn't found in the numbers. Your friend that's going out every other day, 
He doesn't know what he's looking for. Of course. Sorry he if he's listening. No, and he probably will, and he's going to laugh because before you even don't, finish this don't statement, hurt me. he went out with a girl the other day and he goes, Yeah, she actually looked at him and goes, Do you believe in aliens? And his response was, Oh, yeah, I believe in aliens, just to keep her there and interested. I go, well, Why'd you go out there? Because she's hot. Because she's hot. She's hot. And she was good eye candy. And I had, I just, you know, who, know, who knows what could have happened at the end of that date? That's what he says. I got to admire it, though. But, well, you know, you know, he's out there. Good for him. He is out there, though. Good for him. And that's fine, too, <laughs> yeah. because that's just that's a stage as much as it is anything else. Right. right. And maybe he'll fine tune what it is that he's looking for. It's just not the most efficient way to go to it. I hope it. so. He's such a good guy. And it's expensive. You know? Yeah, he's a really good guy. And he and he he if any girl would be um, he'd be amazing, you know. Right. In a relationship. Would he? Oh, yeah, totally. We have to look at the ROA, right? So if your ROI is like, how many times are you swiping a day? How many dates are you going out on a week? What's it costing you? What is your time worth? Not that anybody is really an hourly kind of person these <laughs> days. But really, what is your time worth to be going out on all those endless dates? And then it's hard if you know you've got a date Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. How much are you going to invest of yourself? How much are you going to share? Yeah. Right? And if you've told your story over and over and you're getting tired and fatigued and right. you feel like you've recited your CV and how many brothers and sisters do you have and where do you work and all that superficial banter people do to burn time, you're not going to be present for that Wednesday, Friday date. That's true. Especially if you got hurt or knocked back that previous date. You know, now you you're really going to be like, the next one. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, yeah. you're getting caught underneath oh, my, my wheel of revenge. Well, but this goes back to what you said, though. We're not we're not um, um, looking at after the other person. We're just thinking about us, us. and not who you're actually out with. Yeah. Burning them or whatever it is at the same time. Yeah. When you're on a date, you know, and again, we're circling back to blind spots. The reason why we miss the blind spots is because we're so focused on ourselves. Right. And what we're getting out of it that we're not really, really observing. Yeah. And if we were there in more of like a neutral space of, hey, I have no attachment to what this would be, but I'm really curious about you, we would learn those things that are those dark corners and blind spots. Right. We There's a way to be open without being completely vulnerable. Y y yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can talk about vulnerability. Mm -hmm. But yeah, of course. And if you take the focus off yourself and you put it onto somebody else, everything you need to know is actually there. You don't need to date three, six, nine months to figure some of this stuff out if you know what you're doing. Do you hear that, listeners? See, see, April's got her stuff down. This is what I've been trying to tell you. <laughs> you don't need all that time, but you need to just be present and you can start figuring the self out as long as you are have your checklist, have all your stuff down and know yourself. Just be just love yourself, by the way. You know, there's one thing that you mentioned, one thing that I love to do, April. It's like like yourself. I love meeting people. It's like a puzzle that I love just to kind of sit there and just bob and weave and just get through all these interest keys. And the more layers you peel from that person, the more excited exciting it is for me. Well, have you ever met a boring person, Chris? Yeah, well, I could say no to that. I mean, because I can talk to a tree and yes, still make them talk. Right. You know, so. So let's talk about that. What okay. do people do if they're, you're an extrovert, clearly. Yes, I I'm am. I'm an extrovert. We love people. What are the, what if listeners are, are here right now and they're saying, but I'm not like April and Chris, I'm more of an introvert. Okay. How do I, you know, get out of that shyness and and make sure I put my focus on the other person. And what if I don't have a lot to say? And, you know, it's very good. scary Let's, for people. So we should address that. the introvert. Okay. Okay. Introverts out there, listen closely. Go ahead. Right? Yeah. Oh, you're going to let you take the wheel on this. Yeah, I mean, this, is, this is why you're here. I'm, I was I'm, hoping I could just I'm, shift it. Well, you can, but no. I'm still learning. I'm happy to have you here because I'm Thanks. learning so much from you right now. And a part of me feels like, thank God I'm on the right page of what I'm doing for the most part. But you are just amazing. So thank you. I'm, I'm passing it over to you on okay. this one. Okay. So to me, it doesn't matter if you're an extrovert or an introvert. Uh, because if it's built from listening and authenticity and care and compassion, that none of those things stop you from um, shyness or being an introvert mm -hmm. don't stop you from your authenticity. Only fear does. Right. Right. So how do they take that first step? So the first step is honestly calling it out. Okay. Authenticity okay. and vulnerability means 100% transparency. That's what vulnerability is. Yep. Vulnerability isn't here's all the horrific stories of my life, right? Because then you're just then you're just overly you know doing it, and you're going to lose people. Yeah. Vulnerability is also telling you, oh, it's my parents' 59th wedding anniversary today, and I, I they taught me how to love. I love that. You know, or um, my husband said something today that hurt my feelings. Like that's vulnerability. Yes. Sharing my joy, sharing my pain, sharing the traffic that happened on the way. Like it's all just transparency. 
So if I were shy, the first thing I would say is leaning over to the table and saying to somebody, I know this is crazy because I'm a grown up, but I'm shy right now. <laughs> like, this is weird. You now have literally brought somebody into your world that wants to help you with that shyness. Right. Call it, say, I kind of feel like I'm more of an introvert, so this isn't always easy for me. The minute you do that, if you're in the hands and the company of the right person, they're going to reach out and go, oh my gosh, that's so cute. Yeah, or that's true. adorable. Or that's endearing. And now you don't have anything to worry about, provided you've gone out with the right person. Yeah, that's the, for sure. Going right? out with the right person. It's the mm -hmm. covering up of the shyness or the introversion that hurts people. Because it's mi it's like mixed messages, mixed marketing. We don't know who you really are. Don't say you sell bananas and hang a shingle that says we sell ice cream. You know, <laughs> don't make me walk in the door and find out that you really don't sell ice cream. Right. right? So you're saying a part of a part of that is that they're. Um, I don't want to use the word agreeable, but you're saying in that situation where they're just almost because they're an introvert, they're just going to say what you want to hear sometimes in theory. Is that no, what you're, okay. no, no, no. You mean to say like if I called out and said I'm 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 nervous or I'm shy or I'm an introvert? Well, right, not that aspect. But if they if they don't say anything and now you're trying like me, let's say I were out, okay, and, and and I can sense I sense that you're an introvert, or or let's say someone just doesn't. They're expecting you to open up, but you're not opening up because once again I feel like you said you're not you're not sharing that part of you. Yeah. So how do you with that being said, let's say you're with a huge extrovert. You know, this person's ah, ah, lead the way or this person, this girl, he or she leading the way. You're just going along for the ride. So I guess what I'm asking is that do you feel sometimes the introvert can be agreeable and just going along with whatever that person says? Well, yeah, it happens all the time. Right. But just because you're an extrovert doesn't mean you drive the bus right. of the conversation. You also have to add in the more of an extrovert you are, the more sensitivity you have to build in. Yes. The more awareness you have to build in the more observation you build in so that you know that you're leaving somebody behind so that you can catch yourself and go, you know what, I'm doing all the talking or, you know, you seem like that bothered you. Like if we're really reading each other, yes. um, we'll see it. Okay. Right? And okay. We'll, we'll help each other okay. through that conversation. That's why I say we have a responsibility as extroverts to see what's going on. But the introvert needs to understand and the person who is shy needs to understand that shyness after a certain age, is no longer sweet. We don't see it. Yeah. Unless you're 12, we're not going to go, how cute. Y you have to call it out first and also understand that if your shyness is making someone else feel uncomfortable, and I don't know about you, but when I'm with people that don't ask me questions, mm -hmm. um, I get upset because I have to ask questions all day. Right. And I'm, and I'm exhausted, right? So I look at it as shyness can be rude, but people who are shy are never thought of as rude they're just thought of as cold yeah, aloof right. not interested it could read all these i'm not saying that people who are introverted are but unfortunately your introversion or your shyness can read as selfishness i'm not interested i'm aloof yeah, you're not the one true. for me so very you have true. to be really careful and that will help you that'll snap you out of it if you think wait a minute i don't even think i'm rude or aloof or not interested so I'm going to bring up my game a little bit. Okay. Right? And it's not in how many how much conversation happens on dates. To me, the best dates are when there's pregnant pause and I moments like of feeling and we don't remember that. Like a, a really good date has some silence in it. Yeah, I agree. I, I like that. I like when you look into the other person's eye. You, eye contact is huge for me all the time as well. When I talk to someone, you know, I'm never looking down. I'm always looking right at the person. I'm listening very well. Um, I also ask a lot of questions, like you said, but I'm also very, um, um, what's what I'm looking for? I'm present and I, well, you said something about with the introverts, I'm, I care. You care. You know, I, I do care. I do care. I'm, I'm always there. And like, and I, I will never overstep boundaries. And I'm, and as long as the person shares something, which is usually what they want to do, and I never lose that person's trust because of that. That's 100%. really shitty when people just like go back at it and just, you know, you lost that trust and it's just all gone now. Yeah, a hundred percent. See, I think that's the missing link, isn't it? It's yeah. the care. And that sounds so crazy because nobody ever thinks about care and compassion for a first, second, third date. Because we're very selfish when we date, <laughs> right? It's a motivation of I'm going to go see if this person is is somebody I want. Right. But if we went in caring, had a little bit more compassion, and we combined a little curiosity, we would actually have more relationships, better relationships, um, fewer first dates, 
right? More multiple dates, more relationships being built. But people go, no, 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 no. That care and compassion is only reserved for people once I know them. And that that's not actually effective. Yeah, and it's a little too late by then. It's too late, but yeah, thank you. Right. Yes, it's too late. Mm-hmm. So you have to re you have to like reverse engineer it and bring that in which you bring to people that know you very well. Okay. That have earned and deserve your care, love and respect, <laughs> and you actually bring it to that perfect stranger. Okay. I like that. Because you never know what somebody did before they walked in the door that day. Yeah. You know, you show up for a date, you don't know if they got they lost a deal. Uh, they lost their cat. Right. Well, it's like you, <laughs> you walking know. in, you know, like you're like, you're like, so Paul, I'm so this and that. I was like, you know what? I'm so laid back you were and so casual. Cool. There's just, it's like, I'm yeah. not stressed out about it. And I feel like everyone, you have to be able to take the good with the bad. And it's just like, by the way, there's no bad in that at all. <laughs> not at all. If I meant to say that, you know, like why most people will take it that way saying, oh my God, it's on my time. It's on this, it's on that. I was like, no, it's our time. And I learned that a long time ago with someone when, I mm-hmm. was talking about something and she looked at me and she goes, you know what? She goes, this is our time together. It's not just yours. And I, and this was when I was in my late twenties, by the way. Oh, I love I, that. It's, and that's something that I hear to this day. I snapped out of it and I was like, wow, you're right. It's just not about me. It's like, it is because it is our time. And from that moment on, everything that I look at when I'm with someone, it's like, no, like you said, it's not my time. It's our time. If you're here spending your time to meet me, vice versa, me meeting you, we need to figure it out together. It's our time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love that. And people need to understand that about you. Like when you were dating, if time is, it's important to you Mm -hmm. because clearly you invest a lot of your light and a lot of your energy when you're you're one-on-one with people. But if that's something that is of, of you... Then when you enter into a relationship, you have to tell people, yes, time is important to me, but I'm also a little bit more go with the flow. So if I'm late coming to see you, it doesn't mean any kind of disrespect. Right. It just means I was really interested in a conversation or I was finishing up a work call. Please know that it has nothing because people think of lateness as a sign of disrespect. Agreed. Yeah, and it's I don't not like always that. The, the case. I don't like that at right? all. Yeah. I have doctors uh, who spend more time with their patients and they're late for their others. I have um, a vet for my dogs who's always late, but he will give you a thousand percent of his time, devotion, and attention when you're in a See, that's so, a good doctor. That's a good vet. Exactly. What's the name of that vet? I need to get that out for this I episode. can't give it out because honestly, it's so hard to get into. I'll give it to you privately. <laughs> that's what I mean. Yeah. Um, but it's also like just, you know, it's knowing yourself knowing your, not just your self-worth and what your value is, but what what are my core traits? Like, what is it about me that I've had since I was knee-high, mm-hmm. you know? Because yeah. I don't think we change that much. We grow. Yeah. We become. <laughs> but I think our core traits have always been our core traits. Agreed. Right? And where is our value? And where is our romantic value? And how does somebody access their romantic value with us? When we date, we date very one direction of here's what I'm looking for. Are you what I'm looking for? And both people are doing that. Instead of saying, here's what I have to bring to the table in a romantic sense, but also who is the guy or the girl that benefits from said traits and how do I activate those traits in them? Because the best person doesn't always win. Yeah. That's why a lot of especially women scratch their head and they go, I don't understand. I'm smart. I'm beautiful. I'm successful. And he ended it with me to go out with her and she's not of my level and what we don't understand and what we don't look into is maybe that other woman answers his need in some way right 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 maybe in his in that relationship he feels empowered or feels safe or feels like he's got a softer place to land this is not the i'm the best of the best or the miss mr or mrs congeniality it's not a race i always say it's not a race race. you know it's how do we how do we blend? And I think that's a topic for another time. But I think <laughs> we create connection. I think we create chemistry. I don't think it's as elusive and mysterious as people think it mm-hmm. is. I mean, there's life is hard. Business is hard. This connection relating is quite easy. I just think we make it more difficult than it needs I to be. I feel like it's a vacation half the time, you know. Me too. Don't you? Yeah. Yes. It's like you get out there, it's like I've 
once I know it's time to go out, we can go out with friends, whatever it is. Heck, I'm so I'm a tennis pro for a living. Um, that is me all day long. Like the, I get a connect, a new connection every hour. Mm. Obviously, there are a lot of old clients in there, but when a new person comes in, their first lesson, you know, you got to get through the nerves, you get through this and that. But I'm looking for that connection with that person because ultimately, I'm going to be your coach if you decide to keep me for the next, you know, six months, year, ten years. Um, so I need to make sure that you feel comfortable being on court with me and trusting me. And that's one of the things that I love to do. So I can get anyone out there, you know, and I read it right away. Someone's a little bit more shy, like you said. Someone's a little bit more aggressive. You know, there's all the different types, but I curb it to where it's like we are all on the same playing field. We're all even out here. There you go. You just said it. Do you hear that, guys? Do you hear what she just said, everyone? I just said it. You just said it. I make you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm right away with me because I'm sure there's pl I'm sure you're amazing by the way on the Thank court you. but there's a lot of a lot of experts and a lot of coaches right and a lot of pros what keeps us coming back is how we feel when we're with you right it's not just your level of expertise and that's why there isn't any real competition <laughs> but if you go in saying I'm not going to be the I'm you're not going in saying I'm going to be the best and the baddest and I'm going to get you to pro level. You're yep. going, your first intention is I'm going to make you feel comfortable with me. Right. Because I know you might be a little nervous. You might be a little intimidated. I'm going to make sure that we're on an even playing field. If everybody did that on a date, I'm going to make sure that when I meet this guy or when I meet this girl, my only intention is connect yes. and make sure that person feels comfortable in my presence. Period. I, that's you, that's it, guys, right there. So hands down. And by the way, it puts everyone on a even playing field. Yep. Um, it takes everyone's walls down. And and like I said, there's there's no one upping each other. This is something with this whole dating smarter thing. I think, like April said, it's just a lot of us go into well, not us, but a lot of <laughs> daters go into this like, what do I need? What am I looking for? And right away, back back up a little bit and just say, hey. Let me just experience something new, but just be aware of your checklist at the same time. Well, the checklist can't be um, the checklist can't be a list of superficial wants. Well, that's exactly that's very true. Oh, wait, wait, hold on, backtrack, hold on. You mean I can't have my big boobs, great looking? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> not you know. Yes. Yes, I can. But not no. at the expense of. Ma values, morals, principles, lifestyle goals. Loving aliens. How someone, I mean, I, how can someone love treats aliens, you. You know, <laughs> I mean, that's on yeah, my list. Yeah, you right? can have everything you want. <laughs> you can supersize that, but not not forsaking the things that really drive and maintain relationships. Not if you want longevity, right? And that's the biggest problem that I have is everybody wants all this beautiful stuff under the hood, and they're mm -hmm. like, and make sure it comes in this package, and that's not always easy to find, right? And so if you're just looking and you've got this like kind of planned out picture, you're going to miss the things that come to you. It should be, how did I feel? How did this person, how did, how did I feel when I was with this person? And what do I want to feel? Yes. So if everybody has one, this is how you can date smart, have one word in your mind of when I'm in the company of somebody, I want to feel blank okay. whatever that is boobs came to my mind I'm no, sorry. no 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 oh, I, I didn't oh, say sorry. what do you want oh, to gotcha. feel i know <laughs> i said how do you how do you <laughs> <laughs> oh i want to feel the boobs too eventually but well, that's a that's okay. another show <laughs> how <laughs> you're hilarious thank you how do you <laughs> how... i'm getting comfortable with you now let's <laughs> see i got her laughing now guys how do you want to, how do we want to feel Right. And by the way, that changes from time to time. Yeah. So that's why there is no uh, soulmate or one perfect person. It's right now at this time in my life, I might need to feel safe. Right. So I'm going to go out on a date. It doesn't matter if everything checks my box. If I don't feel safe, I'm not going to give a second, third date to that person. It could be I want to feel inspired. I okay. want to feel adored. I want to feel respected. So if we can think of that more than we can a checklist. Right. Good point. It's a better litmus test. It's a better barometer of what's going on on those dates. Um, so it's just easier. It's okay. just an easier like path, that. a simpler path for One dating. step at a time. Like, yeah, yeah. drill it down. Right. I just think lists are terrible. Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, you know. Like, they didn't fit my checklist <laughs> is the last thing as somebody who helps people connect and get together, that's the last thing I want to hear. Right. Right? Well, uh, yeah, okay. So I'm ripping up my checklist, guys, okay. but I'm really going to put it in my back pocket. I know so, guys do, you know. and women do too. Yeah. But, um, you know, I had a guy that went out with this woman once, and she wasn't his typical type, but 
there was something about her that when they were waiting for the valet, he said, I couldn't help it, April. I was leaning, I was leaning into her. I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't wait to just be next to her, even though she wasn't what I was looking for. So if you're open to that, you actually can find that physical emotional the energy, chemistry. That's when I feel like the energy like, you know, exudes the most at that point as well. It's sometimes you find the person that you really weren't really looking for it's because of their energy you know like energy attracts 100 percent. so all right well we're gonna stop there guys but you know april we have the question of the day i always do a question of the day okay um but i want to recap before the question so things to think about in order to date smarter and help me through this yes we talked about self-compassion you know we talked about be mindful you know be present and listen well um be authentic you know be your true self on a date don't I try to be someone else. Um, don't go with that checklist, you know, maybe just a little checklist, but not mm -hmm. a big checklist. Be open, uh, be more refined. You know, it's okay to, I'd say, and this is something if you agree with me here, be intentional and be picky as long as you've already taken steps to check in with yourself and evaluate your needs. Like you said, like maybe I'm looking for someone who's going to be more compassionate, more, I need to feel safe, things like that. I feel like that's a part of that. Um, and be tactful, you know, have someone of a plan and take your time when dating. There's no rush. It's not a race, you know, be able to enjoy every day, get the most out of it. You might, you might make some really good friends out of all this stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Invest yourself. Yep. Uh, invest your time, your care, your compassion and attention without attaching yourself to an outcome and just be insatiably curious about the people that you're with and pace just pace yourself. I really feel like we are all exactly where we need to be. Good. That's so a good let's one. not try to be someplace where we're not. That's really great. That's a very good ending to that. So we are going to jump into the question of the day. And I'm going to have you start off this because I always have my co host answer it first and I'll jump in at the end. Okay. All right. So here's the question. Hi, Christopher. Love you. And I really enjoy listening to your show every other week. Highlight to my Tuesdays driving home. Okay. So let me get right down to business. Dating apps are really starting to make me crazy. One day, I think it's me, and then the next day, I think it's the guy courting me. I can't seem to get off this crazy roller coaster of always trying to outsmart these apps. So here's my question. I frequently go out on a date at least once a week on average and really try to put myself out there to be in the moment on these dates. But honestly, I feel like all these guys I'm going out with are yahoos. On the apps, their bios get me interested, then we text, and they're charming. But as soon as I'm on a live date with them, they fizzle out. I feel like the majority of these guys lose a little bit of their personality in person, but behind the scene, they say all the right things. Am I being picky or is my picker just way off? Signed, dizzy and confused. Uh, well, dizzy and confused. <laughs> Made me dizzy. Just read that. <laughs> Neither is okay. my answer. Um, you're not being too picky and your picker is not off. There's just not enough information. So if that's happening, a lot of people are really good writers. Mm-hmm. Um, what I would do if I felt like I was burning time because I was getting out in person with these people is I would say, I would love to hear your voice. Can we have a call? And get on the phone and feel like what feel like the, what that feels like to have a phone call yeah. or a FaceTime. Not a FaceTime because you're seeing if you're going to be attracted, but a FaceTime to get to know them better. And if somebody goes, I'm not into that, I just want to slide right into the in person, just say, I really would prefer it. And if somebody doesn't want to, then that means don't go out with them. Yeah, great point. Because I would oblige somebody if they said I'm more comfortable with this. That's a better way of saving time. And by the way, picky is different than selective. Oh, nice one. I like totally how you different. that in. Picky is superficial. Selective is I've got to be treated in the right way. I have to have really good values, shared values, shared ideas, shared vision of life, how we celebrate life, how we treat our friends and family. That's selective. Okay. Picky is too tight, too 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 small, too high, yeah. hair, no hair, mm -hmm. brown eyes, blue eyes. That's that's too picky. Didn't like that shirt or those shoes. There's a lot That's of That's low that vibration. Too, Selection is very high vibration. All right, guys. So you hear that? Be selective and not picky. And I agree with April on that one. I'm just going to say I agree with you on that. So, okay. because I feel like, you know, just get more information from these guys, first of all. Um, take your time. Like April said, face to face, live video, whatever you need to do so you can make sure that you feel comfortable and read all their signs and get to know them better. Um, you know, a lot of people slide right into this jumping from the app and going right on the date because they don't want to waste that in between time. Spend the in-between time, guys. Spend the yeah. in-between time. Like April said, pace yourself. All right, April, you're amazing. Thank you. This is Thank fun. You. Oh, my God. I'm so happy. I, I'm just like, I'm, okay, my nerves are gone, guys. I'm really happy to have had you on the show, and I appreciate it. Anytime you want to come back. I'd One last to. thing. Is there anything you'd like to plug before you take off from this episode? Uh, yeah, just check out Level Connections. Women are invited to um, join our network. Um, it's a private offline network, and our profile questionnaire is – 
likened to the Myers-Briggs for the heart. So right. whether or not we have anybody who we're working with as, as a member to match you with, it's so nice to be in it because you actually learn a lot about yourself in the process. And then you're safe and you're offline and no one sees you there. And of course, for the guys too, just check us out at Level Connections. Awesome. Level Connection, guys. That's it. And you can reach me at anything, Christopher, at dating hyphen intelligence and all my social media at anything dating, uh, dating intelligence. So once again, another great show. And April, thank you. Thank you so you're much. Amazing. This has been fun. All right, guys. Till the next time. See you then.